I don't eat salad. Why? Because you're picky like a five-year-old? Yes. And I'm worried the salad will bite me back. Hey, Julia here. And Julian here for D News. Meat eating plants creep most people out. You either think of them as like the vine from Jumanji or Audrey II from Little Shop of Horrors. The Swedish naturalist Carl Linnaeus wrote, to think that plants ate insects would go against the order of nature as willed by God. Another famous naturalist, Charles Darwin, on the other hand, loved them. He called the Venus flytrap one of the most wonderful plants in the world. Of the hundreds of thousands of flowering plants on this planet, only 630 species eat insects. And these plants aren't all that exotic. They grow all over over the world, maybe even in your backyard. And not all of these species are directly related. What's remarkable about this trick of taste is a cool case of convergent evolution. The ability to eat insects arose six separate times. Now, while their diets mostly consist of things that crawl, occasionally a small rodent or reptile will take the bait and become plant food. Trapping an insect is tricky, so there's not just one way to do it. There's actually about five main ways to go about catching a meal. The most common and well-known is the snap trap. You've seen the videos, the hinge jaw like leaves spring closed on a little fly just as it enters its maw. But how does a plant move that fast? Well, in a way, the plant is electric. When two of its sensory hairs are triggered in 20 seconds, this signals food to the plant, not just a raindrop. The electric signals carry ions and water out of the plant cells at the hinge, so they get all floppy and the jaws closed. And after the meal is caught, the plant releases enzymes to digest the meal. Sometimes the jaws won't open for days. And contrary to its name, the Venus flytrap doesn't catch many flies. Instead, it feeds on whatever happens to crawl its way, like a tasty beetle or an ant. Another active attacker, bladderworts, suck in their prey to a watery grave. They grow in fresh water, and like their name suggests, they trap their prey into tiny bladders along their stem. The plant pressurizes the bladder so there's less pressure inside than out. When a passing protozoa hits a trigger hair, the door of the trap deforms and the bladder sucks in their prey with over 600 Gs of force, trapping it in less than a millisecond. That's horrifying. Faster than you can blink. Then there's pitcher plants. These guys should carry a warning, slippery when wet. As passive eaters, they lure their prey with a sugary substance, then they sit back and wait for the meal to slip in and drown, which is a good strategy when you live in a place where it rains for half the day, in Borneo. But because they are slippery only when wet, they spend about half their day not getting any food. Ah, but these plants are clever. By remaining dry for half the day, they allow some prey like ants to go free. These ants return to their nest and say, hey guys, come check out this awesome buffet I just found. And when the ants and its colony mates come back in hordes, the plant has probably been rained on and is now a slippery slope of death. Rather than a slippery slope, lobster pot plants have a slow spiral toward death. They kill their prey slowly. I guess how we cook lobster in pots? I guess that's where its name comes from. While they are similar to pitcher plants, these guys trap their prey by creating a kind of underground maze. And small hairs line the walls of these traps, leading the prey deeper and deeper into the death spiral till they get to a point where there's no turning back and they can't get out alive. Sounds like my last relationship. Last but not least, species like Darwin's favorite, Drosera, use flypaper traps, and like their name suggests, these guys secrete a sticky mucus to trap a passing bug. They're sometimes called sundews because of their mucusy stalks that look like drops of morning dew. But rather than heralding the dawn of a new day, these drops herald doom. Some species even have long tendrils that enclose their struggling prey, and some species of sundews can live crazy long, up to 50 years. God, the more we're learning about these plants, the more terrified I am. I know, they are the dominant I'm gonna have forms. nightmares. I had nightmares of we... that plant from Jumanji, and I'm having flashbacks. Triffids, man. Triffids. But if most plants photosynthesize and get their energy from the sun, why do these species need to eat? Well, these plants evolved in the conditions where the soil didn't contain enough nutrients, but had plenty of water and sunlight, like bogs, for example. But they don't live off their meaty meals. They use the nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and maybe even potassium that they get from their prey to produce the type of enzymes needed to get food how most plants do, from the sun. It's not the most efficient system, but it did create some of the coolest, creepiest plants on the planet. What do you think? Creepy? Cool? Do you want one as a pet? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Julian, this is Julia, and we'll see you next time on D News.